and just give you a little bit of information about our topic for this half term. So, last half term we looked at the Romans and now we are moving on to traders and raiders. So this is looking at the period of time after the Romans left Britain. We're going to be studying both the Anglo-Saxons and the raiders in the situation, which are the Vikings as well. So some really interesting bits of history we're going to be looking into. Uh, we're going to be studying about kind of how the changes uh, occurred in Britain, what happened after the Romans left, because we've talked about the impact Romans had, and we'll be looking as history moves forward what those different groups of people and how they've affected Britain. Um, we're also going to be looking at the effect of kind of those Viking raids. We'll be looking at what happens with some of the monasteries and some of the reasons why the Vikings are known as the raiders. Now, uh, what would be really useful is about how you did a little bit of research around one of those two groups. Uh, my suggestion would be that you looked into some of the Norse gods, the Viking gods, and you may have heard of some of their names due to them being quite popular with some of the Marvel movies recently. Um, so you may want to research into people like Loki, Thor, Heimdall, Frey, Odin, or Frey. So if you could research one of the Norse gods, maybe create a little PowerPoint that you could upload on Seesaw, that would be really lovely for me and Miss Lamb to see uh, at school. Thank you. Uh, Hi Griffins, Mr Bell here, just to give you a bit of a sneak peek on what we are going to be doing in Spring 1. So, continuing on from our last multiplication division topic, where we were really focusing on those times tables, now we are going to move on to the more formal way of looking at multiplication and division. Now this is where our times table knowledge really comes into its own, and that's where we'll see why we spent so long in year four focusing on those times tables. So again, if you're feeling a bit shaky, make sure we have a bit of a practice at home on TT Rockstars. So we're going to focus on, first of all, multiplication. So we're going to be looking at a three digit number multiplied by a one digit number. Okay, uh, And we're going to use column method for this. So again, this means I'm going to need to know my three times tables really well. And again, I'm always going to start from my ones column. So first of all, I'm going to look over here and I've got a four in my ones column. So my first time table to know is four times three. Hopefully we're not too slow and we know that equals 12. So that means the one goes in here. Now I've got a 10 and I can't just stick it in the next box yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write it underneath so I remember to add that on after I've done my next one. After that, I'm going to have a look at my tens column. So the digit in my tens column is a one. So I know I can just do one times three. Again, we did a lesson on this. Multiplying by one, it stays the same. So three. And I'll make sure I add on this extra one to turn that into a four. Okay. Last one, I'm going to look at my hundreds column. I've got a Digit of 2, so 2 times 3 is 6. 214 times 3 is 642. So that is how we're going to be doing our multiplication. And as you will have noticed, it is all to do with your times tables. I know we're all so excited to carry on with our times table work. So that is it. Now, moving across to our division, we're not getting away from times tables though. We're going to be looking at bus stop methods. So again, we'll be thinking at it. First of all, I'm dividing by five, which means we're going to use our five times table. The question I always ask myself with bus stop method is how many of my divisor goes into the number? So first of all, I'm just going to look at this first digit that appears. So how many fives go into six? So if I represent six up here on my board, I can then have a look at how many I've got and see how many fives I've got. If I create a group of five, I can see that only one five fits in. And then I've got one left over. Now that gets carried over into my next column here. Turning this digit, no longer a three, into a 13. Next step. How many fives go into 13? So we count up in our fives, we go 5, 10, 15, 15 is too many. That means I can fit two fives into 13. And then we know 2 times 5 is 10, we've got 3 left over. Again, fives into 35. Now, those of you who have noticed, it ends in a five, which means it is definitely a multiple of five. We're going to get a nice clean number this time. 
So if I count up in my fives, I know 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Seven fives going to 35. So 635 divided by 5 is 127. Okay? So again, as I've gone on before, time tables, just as important as it has been previously, make sure we are having, getting onto that time table rock stars. We're getting quicker and it will definitely help you if you're learning this half term. See you later, Griffins. Hi Igor, welcome to Spring 1. So in our topic this year in English, we are going to be looking at Eric the Viking. That is linked to our um, creative curriculum topic of the Vikings. We are going to be writing lots of myths and legend stories and character profiles and um, poetry. So that's going to be very exciting. Our grammar focus, this term is determinants now, there is lots of them. So we're going to be taking it one at a time but a general overview of what we've got. So we've got the definite article, which is showing what the house is, so it's the house. We've got interrogative articles, so what and which, so which pen is mine. We've got demonstrative uh, determinants, we've got this, that, these, and those, so those pens are mine. We've got possessive, so it shows her, my, ours, his, yours, theirs. Indefinite, so not a specific, so it's an or a, so there is a football game on. And quantifiers, so that's showing how many there is, so more, less, few, many, some, for example. So hopefully we will get through all of those this time.